What's going on everyone, Nick Corona here, and today we're going to go over a few quick and easy tips that are going to have you shooting with your Mavic like a pro. We're going to be flying the Mavic 2 Zoom, but this definitely applies to the Pro. They're pretty much the same, but just with different physical cameras. So the first step of taking a photo with your drone is getting it in the air, of course. <laughs> So once you're up in the air, you'll see this icon to the far right with the camera and the video camera on it, which you can obviously tap to switch between the two. When you're on the camera, you'll notice it says HDR. It lets you know what photo mode you're on, which right off the bat, a lot of people might not know exactly what this means, and you're probably just in the standard mode. So first of all, to get to your camera settings, you're just going to tap the little bars with the slider icons under where you actually take the photo. And then at the top, we're going to be in the middle section right now. You'll see options like image size. You can choose between 4x3 or 16x9, which I am currently using, which is not the default, so you do have to change that. And then if you tap photo at the top here, you'll see single shot, HDR shot, hyper light, multiple AEB, time shot, pano. They all do something a little bit different. So first of all, I find the single shot best to use whenever you're in a situation where maybe you're moving quickly. And you want when you're moving quickly and you just want to get a few shots off. But my favorite is HDR shot. Now, you'll notice as soon as we go to HDR shot in Hyperlight, it brightens up, kind of giving us a preview of what's going to happen. Also, it's important to notice that you need to tap where you're taking the photo to make sure that your camera always focuses. Um, now, with HDR shot in Hyperlight shot, what it's actually doing is taking multiple photos and stitching them together to give you a brighter, higher quality image without the graininess of a high ISO. So it gives you incredibly high quality photos that you can zoom in on and look around on no problem. Um, you can crop them down pretty nicely as well. However, you're gonna lose your ability to take quick photos and you can get really weird blurs, which is cool for some things, but if you're trying to take a picture of an action, you can have a hard time. Also, you'll see at the bottom here, um, <clears throat> so after single shot, HDR shot, which I recommend staying in pretty much all the time, hyper light if you're doing nighttime shots like I talked about, and it actually does a great job at nighttime photos. Multiple, I think that's pretty obvious. It just takes multiple photos and you can choose how many it's going to take timed shot if you want to be in the photo and time it even though you could just do it in your hand i don't really know exactly when you would want to use that and then panoramic is awesome there's tons of different options in there um aeb as soon as you choose that you can do two three or five The other cool thing though that you'll see under panoramic is super resolution and that's where it takes I think 12 photos and stitches them all together. Um, it's an automatic process as you can see. All of the things in the panoramic section are just sort of 
automatic things that happen. It's really cool. Your drone starts to look around and take different photos and videos to stitch things together. And then it all happens in the app. It does a really good job for how complex those things really are. Once you've selected the type of photo you're going to take for your situation, you want to hit the top left icon that kind of looks like a shutter closing and make sure you're in manual mode. Maybe you wanna be in automatic mode if you're not an expert, but if you're looking for quality, you're gonna to wanna to be in manual mode. And the reason being because we're always trying to get the lowest ISO because it's gonna give you the highest quality with a combination of using different filters and um, you know different things like that. And also you can play with your shutter speed on here. So, you know, if you're taking pictures of landscape, if you're taking pictures of landscape or something kind of slow moving, you can use a really slow shutter speed and it makes it easier to have a low ISO. If you're taking pictures of someone playing sports or something moving quickly, that's when you might have to use a little bit of ISO and hopefully not too much so things don't get grainy on you, but sometimes, you know, it can happen. So once you get things looking good as far as the color goes, that's when you want to tap once again to make sure you're focused. It's really easy to forget that. And another cool little trick is you can actually just do a half press on the upper right corner, the photo button, and a half press will focus, autofocus automatically. And then you can even press that button to take the picture so you don't have to actually tap it and look away on your phone screen even though you should be looking at your phone screen to line the photo up. And then the third and final column has options for JPEG, RAW. You can turn on the histogram, which is actually great for when you're trying to match colors so you can make sure everything is nice and even. You can also turn on an overexposed filter, AFC mode, there's a bunch of other options in there, but for the most part, the things that we just went over will help you take really good photos, better than what you get just flying it, putting it in auto mode, and hitting the button. If you take these steps, your photos are gonna look way better, especially when you get them to the computer and, you know, start to do stuff with them. The other nice thing is that when you shoot JPEGs, it puts them right on your phone right away. And I did notice that even though I like raw photos, it didn't put them on my phone right away like it does with the JPEGs. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you all took something away from this today, learned a little something about the Mavic you didn't already know. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't already. I'm always making tons of cool videos. I wanted to do this video first because Photography with the Mavic seems a little bit easier than videos. It gets a little bit more complex and also the, another thing that I've noticed is just shooting with it stock as in no lenses or polarization or anything. It really blows the whites out and it's hard to always get the frame rate you want. So maybe next video. This controller is is seriously, it, it is so cool. Um, it has a little storage space here for the joysticks, charges with an Android plug on the side. It's really easy to just clamp your phone into it. The battery lasts for a long time. I can probably get six or seven flights out of one charge. And the antennas and everything fold up so compact. Um, you know, if you have your stuff at the house and you just want to go fly outside, it's nice because you literally just grab this and your Mavic all folded up and that's it. You can put this in your pocket and just have the tiny Mavic. It's amazing. So, I could just talk about it all day. And that was Mavic Photography with Nick Corona. Till next time, thanks for watching.